First of all, I'd like to apologize that I've been gone for so long. I caught a cold before Christmas and wasn't able to talk for more than 10 minutes before my voice would get super raspy. Then the holidays came and went and with it the obligatory family visit, so that I only now have my equipment around. Most of all, I'm disappointed in myself that I've not been able to go through with the 12 days of anime, but I guess that kinda couldn't be helped. I will be uploading all these videos for January because I haven't prepared them for nothing, starting with this season preview for winter 2016. So without further ado, my name is Christine, this is Hamstarko, and these are the 5 shows I'm most excited for next season. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Durarara actually started in winter 2015, took a break in spring, continued in summer, took another break in fall, and will now end in winter 2016. Durarara just isn't a show I would enjoy on a weekly basis, which is why I only jump on the bandwagon now. I don't really know whether I would say I'm excited for this. I'm still not convinced that you can add anything worthwhile to the premise. The first season was an interesting mix of gang stories, urban myth, and the wonders of the internet, told in a refreshing non-linear way with an amazingly awkward soundtrack and a memorable set of main characters. Yet I considered the one trick pony. I watched Bakano, which is based on light novels from the same author, after Durarara. While the setting and characters make every show unique in their own way, the means the author uses are quite similar. With Durarara and Durarara X2, we simply move from Ikebukawa to Akihabara. We also already know all of the characters and their quirks, and no matter how much I like them, just adding more fluff doesn't do the trick for me. The other big issue I have comes back to Durarara staff leaving Brainspace and founding a studio for the production of this second season. Brainspace is neither the biggest nor the most famous studio, but it is well enough established for every production to be at least solid. Leaving this warm and cozy nest might not have been the smartest idea. Takahiro Mori is among my favorite directors and I love the group of people he usually works with, so it pains me to see that the production process so far didn't go too smoothly. It's not as bad as Card Eater, but still disturbed by tons of recap episodes and Kia that looks more than rushed. But hey, I'm always hoping for the best. However, if this does turn out to be shite, I'll be even more pissed that the director wasted his and my time on this, rather than start working on Natsumi Yujin Show Season 5. But 2016 will be the year I get my bloody announcement, and I'm very aware that I've been saying this for years now. The third arc of Durara X2 can be found for legal streaming on Crunchyroll starting January 9th. And now, this. Prince of Stride Alternative is the adaptation of an Otome game brought to you by Madhouse. Our main characters are pursuing a fictional extreme sport called Stride. It seems to be a combination of a relay race and parkour, which sounds like an awesome premise for fun animation sequences. I have to admit though that I immediately got snarky when I heard about the source material. It sounded interesting enough, but being based on an Otome game, I didn't expect much. That was until I heard about the star. It will be directed by Atsuko Ishizuka with series composition by Takishimoto. Atsuko Ishizuka has directed Madhouse's 2014 summer series Hanayamata, which was one of my favorites that year. It had an unusual premise and was one of the most beautiful Madhouse productions in a while, with a wonderful palette of warm colors, lighting and backgrounds. Ishizuka has also learned under one of the best men in the field, Morio Asaka, and has worked with him on storyboards and as episode director for Nana and Shihaya Furu. I then found out that Takishimoto has worked on scripts and series composition for both Haikyuu and Silver Spoon. Suddenly, I felt at ease. Actually, I'm really excited to see what the two of them make of it. The show has even a different slogan than the game. The one problem I still see, the cast is huge. As we are still focusing on some kind of sport, we are meeting various teams over the course of the story. To get this done in one arc, make the characters somewhat believable and come to a satisfying end seems rather hard to do. Prince of Stride Alternative will be available for legal streaming on Funimation starting January 5th. It is also supposed to be available on Daisuke with no date or region announced as of yet. Which is why this video is so fucking late. Moving on. Shoura 
Kuraku and Kuraku Gushinju is the show that Stephen I'm most curious about for various reasons. It's the story of a man who was released from prison in Japan during the 1960s 1970s. When he comes across the rendition of a certain piece, he decides to learn Rakugo, which is comic storytelling, and not from anyone, but from the man who's gotten him first interested in it. I assume this will be the plot of the one hour long special that will air before the show starts on the 15th of January. I like the 1960s. It's not a time I would want to live in, as I'm quite happy with how far we've gotten over the past 50 years. But a lot of important developments are grounded in the ideologies that began to form during that time. Just like in Sakamichi no Apollon, I find it very interesting to see how things used to be in Japan back then. And comic storytelling in particular is something I haven't heard about before. I like that this show is different from the norm and really hope that it's going to be as good as premise, world and character design make it out to be. The manga has won several prizes, so I'll be taking this as a good sign. Sadly, no licensor has been announced as of yet. Hurry up, Crunchyroll! A plot that has become completely perversive is the one of the next show. I am more than wary of a one show, with them it's either a hit or a miss. I really hope that the Grimworld Fantasy in Ash doesn't fall in the latter category because the watercolor art style is so gorgeous. However, the premise doesn't make my life any easier. It's another one of those stories where a bunch of high school kids get ported into a RPG-like fantasy universe and have to survive somehow. I wasn't aware of this when I saw the first teaser and now I'm already disappointed for I thought it to be a real fantasy setting. I'm completely aware of why this premise is so common at the moment. It has worked particularly well for one A1 show in the past. To give your audience a scenario they are familiar with is also a simple trick to get them involved and an easy excuse for why you would have to explain the world to the main characters. It is also the laziest way imaginable to create engagement. We don't identify with Luke Skywalker because we are all farmers on Tatooine. We identify with him because we know the way he feels, dreaming of something that is bigger than we are. Not being acknowledged for who we are or what we want to be. This is how you create real engagement. Have faith in your audience. They might be smarter than you think. The art style makes me want to like the Grim Girl fantasy in Ash. It is so sad that somewhere, someone, I felt the urge to include these shots in the teaser because they don't seem very confident in their product. Over all this disappointment, I didn't even realize that Yoshimasa Hosuya voices the main character. No video without me mentioning him. He sounds so soft this time around, which is just about my favorite thing in the world. Him being joined by Nobunaga Shimazaki and Hiroyuki Yoshino, whom you might remember from Gangsta and Space Dandy, is nice as well. With this setup, I'm especially curious who will be composing the soundtrack. The Grimga of Fantasy and Ash will start airing on the 10th of January and will be available on Funimation. Lots of animation this season. That is not okay. Dimension W takes place in a not so distant future in which all of Earth's energy problems seem to be solved by an apparently infinite energy source. This energy source is the Dimension W which a company managed to connect to Earth. Only problem, a couple of people are able to access this energy source without supervision. They are too strong to be taken on by the regular police, which is how we meet our protagonist, Kyoma. He's a special type of enforcer, only there to take on those people. Judging from the trailer, he somehow gets involved with them and we will see where the story goes from there. I came to quite like sci-fi and dystopian storylines over the last couple of years. I only find it disturbing how these stories are mostly written to prevent bad things from happening. And then I have to read that scientists are now able to program an artificial intelligence that can get angry. I have seen Terminator. That is a terrible idea. I am very fond of Dimension W's premise. Energy supply and storage are problems we are working hard to solve, so it's easy to get into. Dimension W is co-produced by Studio Three Hearts and Studio Orange, which is interesting because one studio will be working on the 2D, while the other one focuses on the 3D. The trailer definitely looks impressive, the two elements are working well together, and the set pieces and color choices are fitting. 
I can't wait for this. Since Funimation sits on your production board, the series will be available for legal streaming on Funimation starting January 10th. A thing I noticed last season, a lot of the fall titles popped up later on Daisuke, so there is hope for poor Europeans like me. The best news that came out in terms of licensing though concerns the new Leperda 3rd series. The first 13 episodes will be available on Crunchyroll starting January 9th, with the last 13 being available as simulcast starting the same day. I dearly recommend to check out this show, probably more than any of the shows I mentioned before. Even in terms of movies, nothing much is going on. Tokyo Say has been announced for February 20th, and the second out of six Digimon Try movies will come out on the 12th of March. I don't have to explain what Digimon is, but what is Tokyo Say? <sighs> it's a shonen eye drama. Will it finally be a good one that is not rapey or abusive? I highly doubt that somehow, but I will have to head down the rabbit hole to find out. The art style sure looks nice, everything else is out in the open. Speaking of disappointments, a list of the biggest disappointments 2015 will be my next video. If you're interested in that, then don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.